Hey everyone, Pupster here, and we have the final Abyss of Dagoth dev workshop today. The system changes and general quality of life. So, let's go over everything and see exactly what's going on. I think in general, it's just everything's getting a little boost to be a little easier. Veteran players are angry. Mid to early game players are happy. Overall, things are a little less awful, and for that, I am happy. Now, let's take a look. There's so much to cover in this developer workshop. We'll keep it brief. Nothing, like no values are final. Abyss of Dagoth is on October 18th, so let's take a look at what's going on. They're gonna have the focus lens conversion buff, then we're gonna talk about night wave changes, then Warframe Shield changes, then base versus final stats in modding, health, energy, shield, overall, stat overhaul. Okay, uh, break Narmer mission improvements, Archon hunt damage attenuation tweaks, and then misc quality of life changes. So overall, the Abyss of Dagoth is an entire quality of life update, and here is more game buffing quality of life. So, all things considered, it looks like the focus lenses have been increased in the amount of value they give by, I don't know, almost double, but not quite, so that's pretty cool. All Convergence Orbs will offer a flat 5,000 focus bonus to your equipped focus school upon pickup. Okay, okay, cool to know. I like the uh, lens changes. I still haven't finished off all my focus schools because I have put zero effort into that, and I don't mod every weapon and throw lenses on every weapon, so... I'm a bad Warframe player because it's, there's just too much stuff, right? Nightwave changes. Nora Knight has been gracing our airwaves since 2019 that she felt it was time to, for a little refresh in the next Nightwave series. Um, I think they're making things easier. Let's go on. Permanent weekly acts. Streamers, we like our little habitat. To reward the little things you do every week, we've added three permanent weekly acts intended to be unlocked with regular Warframe gameplay. Complete 50 missions. 15, sorry complete and kill 30 Eximus, and then kill 500 enemies. So those are weekly acts. With these new permanent acts, you can earn an extra 13,500 13, standing each week. Not bad. Since these are additional to your weekly act rotation, they are exempt from the catch-up pool. Keep that in mind. Nightwave Act Audit. So they are auditing all of their Nightwave acts to make it a little easier and less painful. We'll go over a list of what is changing. Keep in mind, things can still change. So this is what's going to be removed from Nightwave. All of the removed acts right here. Okay, if you want to go over each and every one, go for it. But <clears throat> a lot of them are just kind of easy, kind of boring. So yeah, those are removed. Reworked acts are Obelisk, Console Hack, Lockers... Okay, uh, resources. Okay, okay, these changes kept the core intact. Since these are all uh, being changed from daily to weekly, we must wait until the next series before we can implement them. So these are all, yeah, daily to weekly, and then they're upped a little bit, so judge that how you will. I don't mind. A bunch of new acts, new daily stuff in Duviri, new weekly stuff for Duviri, and more elite weekly stuff for Duviri, and other stuff, of course. So take a look at all of those one by one if you so choose, but that is too much of a pain for, and it's just not worth going over, right? Now we have a ton of revised acts coming with Abyss of Dagoth. While everything listed above is coming for the next Nightwave series, the following acts are getting changed so we felt reasonable to apply to the current series. Okay. We took two different approaches in these revisions. A, to reduce the grind required to complete some acts, and B, to expand the ways in which players can complete them. So here on Abyssa de Goth are all of the Nightwave updates, changes, makes things easier overall. A lot of these are like, uh, reduce the amount of numbers. So yeah, others are like, yeah, just go to C drop rotation for survival. So it's just making a ton of those easier. And then these ones are a little easier as well. Nightwave's easier. That's pretty much all there is to it, right? All things considered. So, oh, not bad. Introductory Nightwave screen. So there is a new introductory Nightwave screen, which is actually pretty cool. It's like, oh, here's some of the cool rewards, new unique rewards. Ah, oh, sweet. Now, here's the fun stuff. Warframe shield changes. There are many avenues for Tenno to approach Warframe survivability. Usually it's through increasing health armor values, for making use of damage resistance features of certain mods or abilities. For example, shields. For shields, however, there is an incentive to do the opposite. Sorry, for etc. For shields. Uh, I can't read. However, there is an incentive to do the opposite. The current meta encourages players to reduce shield value as much as possible and make use of shield gating mechanics. Nah, that's no fun. 
<laughs> As developers, we're stuck in a strange position. On one hand, we see players' ingenuity and creative ways of creating engaging mechanics, but on the other, we see proof that shields are not offering the same value to players as other survivability tools, to the point where you were rewarded for having the lowest steel shield stat possible. Yeah. We want to change this so that 10 over sensifies increase their max shield stat instead of reducing it. To do that, we're approaching this challenge in two ways. Firstly, we're buffing Tenno shields overall. Previously, Tenno shields offered a 25% resistance to all damage types. Now, Tenno shields will offer a 50% resistance to all damage types. Okay, sounds pretty good overall. I wonder how noticeable this will be, but overall, that's like still sweet, so. We're now also buffing a few shield-specific mods with recharge rate in mind. Fast Deflection, Fortitude, Vigilante, Vigor, okay, cool, decrease delay and stuff, <clears throat> more shield value, awesome. Secondly, we're reworking shield gating. Okay, so they're reworking shield gating because it's kind of goofy. As mentioned above in our intention to offer, they just want to change it so that people get rewarded for building more shield. So let's see, part one. Shield gate duration will scale with the amount of shields you add upon shield break. Previously, full shield upon shield break offered a 1.3 second window of vulnerability. Now, depending on your modded values, this gate could be anywhere from 0.33 seconds to 2.5 uh, seconds, capped at 1150 shields. To receive the original 1.3 shield gate, Players will need to have around 325 shield upon shield break. And this is the shield break graph, if you're curious. Not bad. Not bad. I like it. So TLDR, you'll get rewarded for having a higher shield up to 1150 for the highest amount of sh uh, shield break and vulnerability. So, yeah, keep that in mind. If you like it, you like it. If you hate it, you hate it. Oh, this one people will love. Partially depleted shields do not have a separate shield gate duration. Previously, shield breaks on shields that were not fully regenerated offered a 0.33 second of shield gate. Now, partially depleted shields will be treated with the same scaling value outlined above. That's right, baby! If your shield gets hit and beat up at 750, you'll get a 2 second delay. If it gets hit and smacked around at 500, you'll get a little less than 2 second delay. Or like, shield gate duration. Oh! Sweet. Awesome. Now, partially depleted shields will be treated with the same scaling value. Awesome. With these changes, the more shield you have, the faster they regenerate, the more you'll be out of shield gating system. Oh, out of the shield gating system. Sweet. We're adding new corrupted mod, Catalyzing Shields. Now this one's hilarious. Instead of having the corrupted dragon key, you'll now use Catalyzing Shields. With the changes, shield gating will still want to offer players to interact with the system without always having to mod for the shields possible. To accomplish this, we're introducing a new corrupted mod, Catalyzing Shields. This mod will reduce maximum shields by 80%, but also change how shield gating scaling works. For your Warframe, with a guaranteed 1.33 seconds of shield gating upon full shield depletion. With this mod equipped, shield gating duration will scale from 0.33 to 1.33 based on your maximum shield energy, regardless of what they are. Okay. Okay. For example, if my shield maximum shields are 100 with catalyzing shields equipped, I would expect the following shield gate duration. 100 shields, a shield break of 133 seconds, and then 10 shield, shield break of 0.33. Hey, see? It's a scale. That sweet, sweet scale. So this is the mod that'll incentivize your Warframe to have a low amount of shield, and it'll be the new Corrupted Dragon Key equivalent, because it's, you know, 0.2 times the max, uh, shield capacity, so yeah, pretty good overall. Since the new corrupted mod, it's be obtainable via Orc and Vaults on Deimos, we will run an alert for this catalyzing shield mod one week following a piss of release to give player faster access to the mod to test their build. Sweet, we don't have to farm for it, but if you still do, corrupted mod on Deimos. Decaying dragon keys are being updated to debuff both shields and shield gating, yeah. With revised shield gating, it felt important to update decaying dragon keys as well. These gear items are currently used to lower the threshold needed for full shield break with shield gating. And while we love to see players finding unique reactions uh, between various mechanics, dragon keys are intended to increase difficulty when equipped. With that intention in mind, dragon keys now cap player shield gates to 0.33 seconds maximum. Oh, so now they're just like shit for shield gating. Understandable. Okay, I get that. That's fair. A few others detailed to cover. Hildren's passive is being buffed from 3 second shield gating duration to 3.5 second shield gating duration. Yeah! So yeah, now use this mod instead of the Dragon Key. They wanted to nerf the Dragon Key because it's too, it was been going on for too long, but we still want Shield Gates, therefore you can mod for it with a Shield Gate uh, type of mod like that. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Now, <clears throat> let's do it. A lot of changes uh, to cover overall for Abyss of Degoth. A lot of Shield changes in general, so yeah. 
take a look at those update notes. Base versus final stats in modding health, energy, shield, overall. Oh god, o overall armor stat, overhaul. Oh no, oh no. Warframe math is messed up. What is 300 plus 440%? If your answer is 740, you have just been an Excalibur player. So the TLDR is Warframe math Mods would base around the level 0 health value, or like shield value, armor value, whatever, that your Warframe would have. Which makes no sense. So, your current level is 30, and you have 300, uh, let's say, health, right? You put on your 440% mod. That 440% is based off the level 0 value that your 300 health would be. So it doesn't actually add that much. It's so goofy. Because your level, what, zero value is 100, so it adds 440, therefore it becomes 740, right? Like, it's so goofy. TLDR, they are fixing that. <clears throat> How are they fixing that? Well, they're finally applying the Warframe math to the level 30 values, but they are also nerfing and or buffing mods if it's needed. I think it's all nerfing. They're nerfing mainly, though, mods to kind of equal the same values. So let's take a look. And they're also upgrading a lot of Warframe's base health and armor and shield stuff. So that's interesting. A lot of this is very annoying to read, so we're not gonna go through everything, but that's the TLDR. They're reducing vitality, redirection, steel fiber to end flow, okay? To 100 max energy, 100 armor, 100 shield capacity, 100% health, right? Do you know why? It's because now all of the math will go based on the level 30 values, not the level 0, and they're also upgrading. We are adjusting Warframe Health, Shield, Energy, Armor values to keep the end result of the revised mods as close as to the original values as possible. So yeah, everyone's just getting, everyone's getting buffed, but mods are getting nerfed, and that should equal about the same at the end of the day. So this is the before and after picture that they want to show you, it's right? like. It'll be the same, but modding will be a little different. Numbers will be lower, and it'll be kind of less of a pain in the butt to look at. So you can actually do math without having to write it down very quickly because it makes no sense. So yeah, that's that. They have Warframe stats revealed. If you want to go over all of these, I'll quickly, yeah, the link's in the description if you are curious. And yeah, I appreciate everyone being here for liking, subbing, checking out all the social medias and YouTube videos because it always helps. We have the Warframe mod changes if you want to look at every single specific one. Pretty much armor mod changes values were upgraded for some, downgraded for others, depending on everything. So mod, energy, mods with various stats, specific shield health mods, all upped and downed. Mod changes for Necromech and Arcwing also has changed around. Necromech stat changes as well for Bone Widow and Void Rig. Noise, noise, noise. And everything's changed around a little bit here. All things considered. Cool. Not too mad at that. Makes base values changed around, but some are lower, some are higher. Cool. Nice. Arcwing stat change. These are all of the Arcwings if you want to look at how they've been upgraded value wise. And here is the stat screen for that as well, with the new mod values thrown around as well. Some have been upgraded, right? Some have been downgraded. So that is what it is. While there may be other changes, that is what's happening there. So what do you think? That's a big change there. It's kind of crazy. Like that one has a lot of writing to it, but a lot of the writing can be skipped luckily. So nice. Break armor mission improvements, so they're just giving better quality of life in the break armor movements. Call Seymour. Call has better loot and enemy radar. Fuck yeah, he now has it really. So yeah, calls max speed and overall walking speed increase. Thank God. Call earned stock. Added stock pickups to break armor missions. Five stock pickups will spawn per mission, offering two stock each for a total of ten. Okay, well that's cool. Extraction required to earn pickups, so you do have to extract. Expanding Calls Garrison, you'll find additional weapons next to his fallen brothers <clears throat> as a way to add a as a way to add more variety to his overall gameplay. Three different weapons will spawn randomly each time you play. In Junk Run, Brisbane Make, you can expect the following Ogre, Skundra, Ing Ignis, Tonkor, Grinlock, Jet, Kitag. As for sneaky sabotage, no changes to that one because that one's a sneaky one. Okay, we're almost done here. Not that bad at all. Archon damage attenuation numbers. So damage attenuation's weird because it's not really amazing or perfect at all. Because as long as you just do high AF damage, 
or equipped a high damage one shot type weapon, you can just go through damage attenuation. So they wanted to increase, decrease it again. Maximum damage per damage instance has been increased. Maximum damage per second has been increased. Maximum damage caps are increasing. Our goal is to make big hits feel like big hits, especially for low rate of fire weapons. We're able to reduce the damage cap significantly because of our next change. Okay, so in theory you're like, okay, that sounds good, but then you're like, modifiers now apply before damage attenuation. Critical multipliers and everything else applying post damage cap allowed for many of the one-shot builds, and this is changing it. We want to prevent one-shot Archon builds as much as possible by changing where these modifiers apply. We can increase damage caps to a much less punishing levels for player. I wonder if it's like, oh no, you'll still be able to like kill it within 10 seconds anyways with like... Everyone running sweet incarnate upgraded weapons, Kuva weapons, uh, Tenet weapons, just high high tier strong weapons, but we'll see. Modifiers now apply damage attenuation. Increase player damage output, therefore reducing overall time to kill Archons, make big hits feel impactful, encourage overall build diversity, reduce ability to use one shot build. So we'll see how that goes, October 18th. Now, MISC quality of life. You can finally swap incarnate evolutions that you've unlocked already in your orbiter, in your arsenal orbiter equipment area. Again though, you do have to already have these unlocked. To unlock them for the first time, you still have to go to the Azerman and talk to what, Cavalero? Cav Kurlevo? No, <laughs> Cal Cavalero, so yeah. And then Steel Pass Circuit Rewards, new Riven options. That's right, with Riven Opportunity Rank 9 Intrinsics, you'll be presented with three Veiled Rave Rivens in addition to the weekly Incarnate Rotation for your Circuit Reward. Oh my god, I can't read. Just like the Incarnate Genesis, in order for you to pick the Rivens. So, if you're high enough rank, you can pick Rivens instead of Incarnate Weapons if you have all the Incarnate Weapons. So, yeah, you can farm weekly Rivens once a week with that as well. So what do you think about the quality of life? I think it's interesting, cool, fun. Not Nothing too out there, but it's all just changing around a little bit. It's nice when Warframe do the it. It is nice when Warframe does these massive quality of life number swap out change around updates because it just kind of changes how things work. And I myself am all for that. So I like the update. I think it's pretty cool. Not everything's perfect, right? Some things will be a little annoying, but uh, I like overall all of the Abyss of Degas stuff. And we'll see how numbers change and how the full update is, but. Whew, that's a long one. October 18th is going to be a very busy day. We're going to farm up a lot of stuff and stream and make a lot of videos that day. So I appreciate everyone following along, subbing to my YouTube, Twitch, all my other social medias, all in the description. You can use Epic Games Creator Code Pupsker if you want to support the channel. But, you know, it's up to you. Like and comment down below and all that jazz because, my God, there's so much to do. I'm still undecided if I want to play Cyberpunk, but I feel like I don't have time because I have a lot of like Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact stuff that I want to do and videos around that that I might uh, want to make. So I'm going to do that now, now that I'm done with all this. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Cheers.